Good morning and welcome. <clears throat> we begin our service this morning by singing hymn number two. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, Firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Almighty Father, <clears throat> Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death from the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <clears throat> Please be seated for the readings. <clears throat> the first reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 2, beginning to read from verse 1 to 12. 2 Kings chapter 2, beginning to read from verse 1. The time came up for the Lord to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha set up to Galagal. On, on the way, Elijah said to Elisha, Now stay here. The Lord has ordered me to go to Bethel. But Elisha answered, I swear by my loyalty by the living Lord, and to you that I will not leave you. So they went to Bethel. A group of prophets who lived there went to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, I know. Elisha answered, But let's not talk about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Now stay here. The Lord has ordered me to go to Jericho. But Elisha answered, I swear by my loyalty to the living Lord and to you that I will not leave. And so they went to Jericho. A group of prophets who lived there went to Elijah and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, I know. Elisha answered, But let's not talk about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Now stay here. The Lord has ordered me to go to the Jordan River. But Elisha answered, I swear by my loyalty to the living Lord and to you that I will not leave. So they went on, and fifty of the prophets followed them to Jordan. Elijah and Elisha stopped by a river and the fifty prophets stood a short distance away. Then Elijah took off his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided. And he and Elisha crossed the other side on the dry ground. There, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what do you want from me before I am taken away? Let me receive the share of your, prop, your power, that will make me a, a successor, Elisha replied. Then, that is a difficult request to grant, Elijah replied. But you will receive it if you, see, if you see me, as I am being taken away from you. If you don't see me, you won't receive it. They kept talking as they walked on. Then suddenly... A chariot of fire pulled by horses of fire came between them, and Elijah was taken up to heaven by a whirlwind. Elisha saw it and cried out to Elijah, My father, my father, mighty defender of Israel, you are gone. And he never saw Elijah again. In grief, Elisha tore his cloak into two. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is taken from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 3. Chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 3 to verse 6. For if the gospel we preach is hidden, 
it is hidden only from those who are being lost. They do not believe because their mind has been kept in the dark by the evil God of the world. He kept them from seeing the light shining on them. The light that comes from God, good news about the glory of Christ. Who is the exact likeness of God? For it is not ourselves that we preach. We preach Jesus Christ as Lord. Ourself as your servant for Jesus Christ's sake. The God who said, out of darkness, the light shall shine. Is the same God who made his light shine in our hearts and to bring us the knowledge of God's glory shining in the face of Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. We now stand for the gradual. Reading from the Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, chapter 9, verse 2 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with, them, with him Peter, James, and John, and led them up a high mountain where they were alone. As they looked on, a change came over Jesus and his clothes became shining white, whiter than anyone in the world could wash them. Then the three disciples saw Elijah and Moses talking with Jesus. Peter spoke up and said to Jesus, Teacher, how good it is that we are here. We will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He and the others 
was so frightened that he did not know what to say. Then a cloud appeared and covered them with shadow, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my own dear son. Listen to him. They took a quick look around, but did not see anyone else. Only Jesus was with them. As they came down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has risen from death. This is the Gospel of Christ. Heavenly Father, help me speak, help your people hear for your greater glory in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Will you please be seated? Um, Lest I forget, let me wish Chinese friends here, a blessed new year to the cathedral parish, those who are unable to join us uh, to the church this morning throughout the diocese, have a blessed new year to our Chinese friends. Because it is being celebrated each year, our human weakness detects that we say because we have been saying it and we do it very lightly. Isn't it? Nothing more than just wishing one. A very happy New Year. But actually, there is a lot of culture involved. There is a lot of meaning, significance to what they do as a family, as a community. Those of us who are non-Chinese, we ought to remember that as we have been embracing our own culture, so are our friends. So when we wish them all the very best, it involves all these cultural sensitivities. And we are wishing you every blessing as you celebrate your cultural celebration. Then as we look deeper, there is more to celebration in our life, isn't it? You don't have to look far. Go to the hospital. There you see suffering. There you see people awaiting death. There you see families being affected 
by the immediate realities. Oh, by the way, at our funeral parlor, there is a friend, Ugos, who was the diocesan driver. He was very much part of the diocese. And he is awaiting funeral, I was told, on Monday. So there's death. I began my sermon by wishing you what is culturally relevant at this time. But as we look deeper, there are other sensitivities which are affecting our life. Isn't it? And today we are celebrating according to the church calendar before Advent the Feast of Transfiguration. Our Lord was changed according to the passage. So our culture, the realities of our life, there is that ongoing story of God Beyond all that, there is God's story. That one never changes. That one goes on. And that affects each one of us. This morning, I want you to ponder with me the purpose of the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our hope is that we know a little about our Lord. A little is enough. Because that little is about God's glory. About the meaning of the Messiah. About who we hope to be delivered. We hope to be saved. The church has been using big words when it comes to a mystery like that. Transfiguration, redemption, deliverance. Actually, it's very simple. It's about salvation, save. Our God is a God who saves. Not just one who appears occasionally during cultural celebration. Not just one when we are happy and we make songs. Hallelujah. About what he is, who he is. He is savior. Without him, we are nothing. The passage. Six, it says six days later. The story goes on to say he picked Peter, James, and John aside to pray aside. Where? To a hill, to a mountain somewhere. While he was praying, he was observed to undergo change. His clothes became dazzling white, incomparable to any in the world. And there appeared with him Moses and Elijah. They talk. Then once that happened, Peter had nothing to do, nothing to say. He was you know, nothing to say but just utter words like this. It's good to be here, Lord. It's good that we join you here so that we could build a tent. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Typical Peter. You know, sometimes we were caught up in occasion when... Things were so beyond us. We are so... We caught in a panic, if you like. 
have nothing to do, nothing to say, just say. We just say. And very often it causes a distraction. It spoils everything. Peter didn't know, did not know what was happening. He just said. So much better it was if he had not said anything. Just keep quiet. Just watch. Just listen and learn. We hear a lot about this. When Mary heard people, Mary the mother of Jesus, when the shepherd came, she observed. She put those things in her heart. You hear this. Mary didn't say anything. She kept things in her heart. She was learning. Anyway, that's Mary. That's Peter. That's good for us to, to listen and put things in our heart to learn. There is so much detail in the passage. Each requires unpacking. <clears throat> and because of the limited times, I just only highlight those which I think would be helpful to us. First, there is talked about six days later. Why the need to mention six days later? There's no need to mention six days later. This is what? Just mention the story. Don't say... No need to say six days later. If there is a need for it, that means that's what happened prior, before, is most important. So, St. Mark, the writer of the gospel, mentioned about six days later. If you read your gospel, six days later, Jesus just fed 40,000 people in the wilderness. Peter's confession. Peter said, people say all kinds of things about you. Some say you are a prophet. Some people say this. But you are the Messiah. Peter's confession. You are the Messiah. That's very important. That occasion, six days prior to today's event, was most important. The Messiah. And St. Mark, the writer of the gospel, wished to link the two together. <clears throat> and what happened? Moses and Elijah appeared in conversation <clears throat> with the Lord Jesus. You know, <clears throat> suddenly as I preach, appeared before me Bishop Made, Bishop Basil, or let illustrate, suddenly appeared before me the giant of the past. You know, can you imagine the distraction it would cause? CNN will come here. BBC would come here. The media would descend upon this cathedral. The appear, the apparition, the crowd was saying the people who were already dead in the past appeared with Bishop Bolly preaching. That would be a sensation, won't it? That would be the greatest distraction. No wonder Jesus brought with him only three. Choose from the twelve or eleven. In order to see for themselves and keep quiet after that. 
the real story which ought to be remembered, which, ought, which they ought to uphold. The media can be a cause of major distraction. leading us astray from the real story. But to be able to see the giant of the past to be with Jesus has this meaning, that he is not a departure from tradition. He is not leading people <clears throat> away from Moses, from Elijah, from Judaism. He fulfills it. That's the word. He is the fulfillment of what Judaism was longing for. And this brings us to, because earlier on Peter said, that he is the Messiah, that means our own culture, be it Chinese, be it Iban, Badaya, all the cultures of the world, Jesus is the climate, the fulfillment of all cultures. Not that our paganism is a firm, but the best in our culture. The searching of our culture for the truth. For one which is authentic. For one which leads to heaven. Jesus is that incarnation. He fulfills the best, the very best of our culture. Very often when we preach when we preachers pre preach about transfiguration, the change of Jesus, we talk about what happened then. And nothing to do with my culture. It has everything to do with you and with me. Secondly, there appeared Moses. Moses represented law. Of course, everybody knows that it was Moses who led the Israelites from Egypt to the Promised Land. Along the way, the Lord gave him the Ten Commandments. You know that, don't you? The law. It's the law. So, when it comes to the law, the lawyers among you would know that you should not break the law. This is the law. The law says it. So Moses represents the law. No dispute. Then there is Elijah, the greatest of Israelites' uh, prophets. Prophecy represents, let's talk about reality. Very often, the law and the prophecy, there is tension. I would say there should be creative tension. But sometimes tension brings quarrel, brings conflict, brings disintegration. Because the prophet is saying, there's a lot of corruption. The law does not allow corruption, and yet there are corruptions. You know what I'm talking about. So there is conflict, tension between law and prophecy. On that mountain, my friends, Jesus talked with the two. There was harmony. There was no dispute. In the presence of Jesus, the lawyers and the prophets, they were in conversation. So we need to bring the presence of the Lord Jesus to bring about what is fair, what is just. It 
in Jesus, Moses and Elijah were able to talk creatively. We would say, you see, the story goes on to say, after they were talking, there was a lot of cloud. Moses and Elijah disappeared. Things changed to normal again. And the word you will hear in the scripture, it says, there was Jesus all alone. Despite all the noise, all the sights, all the feelings that fired the disciples, Peter, James, and John, there was Jesus alone. There is great revelation in that. Jesus alone. In our life, we have encountered all kinds of things. We hear a lot of things. We see a lot of things in our own life, in the life of our friends, in the world. Just put on your TV. There are news about war, news about suffering, about mothers and children dying, bomb exploding. You know, that's not somebody else's world. It is our world. That is the story that is relevant now, the reality we see now in our, in our TV. But beyond all that, there is the Lord Jesus. There is the Messiah. It's Jesus alone. There's a lot to talk about in the story of the transfiguration. Suff suffice to emphasize that in the transfiguration of our Lord. He is conveying to the three, you know, to the three, the ministry of the Messiah. If there was no tr transfiguration, the story six days prior, the feeding of the 4,000, the confession of St. Peter that he was the Messiah would mean nothing. It was when Jesus slowly dawned upon the disciples to the three first, so that later when, as the event unfold, then they learn that indeed, this is what Jesus meant. Strategy is what Jesus is talking about. There are good strategies. There are bad strategies. Good strategy would bring you to what you need to achieve. Bad liturgy is counterproductive. Let me bring you back to the time of the judges. You remember there was a judge named Gideon. As the Israelite was trying to settle in the promised land, there were already people there with greater armies, more. How are they to conquer the land? And so he recruits soldiers. The Lord intervened. No. All you need are better, worthy soldiers. 
So he cut off the number of people who should be going to war for the land. Less people. Strategy. Of course, we hear about Gideon's story. He, he won in the battle. So for any endeavor, there is need to strategize. One which is not counterproductive. An approach that would bring you victory. For Jesus to convey to the people that he is the Messiah and tell everybody, look, I am changing. Look, here is Moses, here is Elijah. You know, if that were to happen, the crowd would go home shouting, telling their story, having seen Moses and Elijah. That would cause a lot of sensation, but not going anywhere. That would bring, distract people from the real meaning of the Messiah. Who would believe in the Messiah? Who would suffer? Who was rejected? And say he is the savior of Israel? After all, he was crucified, died, buried. And now another story, he has risen from the dead. You know what? Until now, the official religion of the Jews would not believe in the Messiah of Jesus Christ. Until now, other religions would have, is having no, nothing to do with the Lord Jesus. Despite the strategy, how very easy it is to reject Jesus. And that's why he needed to reveal it to the three. At this time, may the Lord Jesus reveal unto us, despite all the cultures that we have, his true identity. His true identity is one. He is the Messiah, the Savior. His identity is such that he is doing something by proxy. He is doing it himself. And the word we use every day, that he does not abandon us. He's a brother, he's a savior, he is with us. That's all in the liturgy. That is what the church is celebrating. At a time like this, when we use the word Jesus changed, it's not him changed. It is us changing with him and embrace his reality. And may our friends who are celebrating the new year and may all of us, our own culture, find the fulfillment in the Lord Jesus who is our Messiah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now stand for the Nicene Creed.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten and made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. <coughs> In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom we have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, his worship and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one the holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, for the resurrection of the dead, for us in the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for some notices. Once again, good morning and welcome to one and all, especially to a Bishop, Bishop Dato Boli, who just preached to us just now. And also on to <coughs> the Happy New Year to our Chinese friends for celebrating the uh, New Year uh, this time. <coughs> Sorry for my voice. The parish office will be closed until the 12th, that is Monday, for the Chinese New Year public holiday. And we will come back on the 13th, that is on Tuesday. Number two, Bajar Bob Kudus in Iban. Dekat Dadu, ke-15 hari bulan, jam pukul 8 malam, Dur, Bilik Seminar 1, lalu ke dulu ke Kumpu that uh, will study will be in Iban. The conversion class will resume on the 10th of March. Next is the Women Fellowship. Please remember your uh, um, meeting, which is on the 17th of February, Saturday, starting at 2 p.m. And number five is regarding the Ash Wednesday. It's on the 14th of February, Wednesday. The service will begin at 2, uh, sorry, at 7.30 p.m. The annual parish annual general meeting, pursuant to the provisions under Article 5 of the Constitution of St. Thomas's Cathedral Parish, Notice is hereby given that St. Thomas Cathedral Parish annual general meeting shall be held on the 9th of March, Saturday, at the parish hall at 2 p.m. Nomination forms of, for candidates for election to the Paracle Church Council 2024-2026 are available from Tuesday at the parish office. Closing date for nominations is on Monday, 19th of February at 5 p.m. And for the rest of the notices, please refer to the uh, Bill Bulletin. Now we continue with the intercession. Let us pray. 
in the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised to your, through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray believingly. Strengthen Daniel, our Bishop, Andrew, the Assistant Bishop, Tong Meng, our Dean, in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for parish of St. Columbus, Mary, the vicar, Reverend Rodriguez Una Charles, assistant priest, Reverend Josh Sim Kwan Hui, Reverend Augustine Saidi, Reverend Yo Win Ton, and Reverend Roland Ryang the St. Columbus Primary and Secondary Schools, Kindergarten and Nursery, the Outstation, PGA, and all your church in the service of Christ. We also remember the Chinese community in this diocese as they celebrate Luna's New Year, that they will continue to be the source of blessings to others and thankful for God's bountiful blessings. May your church be the sign of your kingdom on earth and continue to proclaim the good news of your reign. Lord, in your mercy, give wisdom to all those who lead in government in our country, Malaysia, and our state, Sarawak that they would be strong in leadership, integrity, peers, and consistent in whatever they do for the sake of the communities. God of peace, bearer of hope, we seek your help for the people of the Middle East. Quiet the clamor of war and guide us towards peace. Where there is hatred and division, so seeds of calm and openness. Where there is destruction, help us to rebuild. Where children are crying, bring an end to tears. Shelter your people and protect them. Guide them and keep them from harm. Show us how to break down the barriers of history and fear and breath whispers of hope. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all who near and dear to us, our family and friends, within our communities and neighborhoods, and unite us in your love, especially for our students who just started their school holiday, and may they be replenished and refreshed as they look forward to the new school term. Give us grace to serve one another, to be mindful and ready to provide for the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy. Father of goodness and love, hear our prayers for the sickly members of our community and for all who are in need, especially for Christina Diana, James Nixon, and John Anamude, who are sick at the hospital, for Catherine Chong, Reverend Winston Sok Kim, Bill Dominic Anna Hazrin, Kawi Anna Eli, and Lerida Jeming Anna Siping, who are sick at home. May these special people find everlasting health and deliverance, and so join us in thanking thanking you for all your beautiful gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, both those who have confessed the faith and those whose faith is known to you. 
alone and grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We remember August ago, Shirley Johnson, Wong Peck Jin, Libu Anak Lanja, Josh Roland Jolly, Ijah Anak Tepo, Sangan Anak Cuat, Victoria Douglas, Roslyn Lo, Josie Chiu Chin Lian, Ramse Janting, and Genevieve Klang Anking, whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Grant them eternal rest and let perpetual light shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Thomas, the Apostle, our patron, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, we pray unto your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him and that we of the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. <clears throat> Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We made in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one other side of peace. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. You live come for us, the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We say together, Yours, Lord, is the greatness, 
the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your honor do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is in it right. It is our duty and our joy at all times in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him, you have created all things from the beginning and form us in your own image. Through him, you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead, 
and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks because the divine glory of the incarnate word shone forth upon the holy mountain and your own voice from heaven proclaim your beloved Son. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Bring this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension as we look for his coming in glory. We celebrate this bread and this cup, his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise.
as our Savior taught us. So we pray. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which He gave for you, and His blood, which He shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that He died for you, and feed on Him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
the post communion prayer <coughs> Holy God, we see you, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers at his table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice and us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. We now stand to sing the recessional hymn.